Hello and welcome once again to the Poker Tracker 4 7 Day Orientation. My name is Sky Matsuhashi of SmartPokerStudy.com and we are glad you're here for Day 6 where we discuss the My Reports tab. Let's roll. Quick itinerary. Again, of course, you're used to this day six do as you consume video. So have Poker Tracker 4 open, go to the My Reports tab, and follow along. Please build the same report that I am about to go through and build with you. We're going to hit that My Reports tab. We're going to take a look at this specific report, and I'll show out, uh, I'll show you a few different numbers, ways to examine and think about the report. I'll help you build a report utilizing the uh, report wizard. I'll show you how to use expression filters to really narrow this report down to useful information or useful players to analyze. And I'll show you how to sort the results, go through some analysis through the results. And at the end, I'll give you two action steps. Now, the reason why I'm showing you the My Reports tab is because you can build reports that help you dive deeper into your own statistics and the stats of others. You can analyze your entire database for yourself and through each of your opponents, not, not their database, of course, but the database of hands that you have on them utilizing reports. Very useful feature. Alrighty, so uh, on the screen right now, we're on the My Reports tab. We spend most of our time under statistics, but right now, let's go to My Reports. Now, of course, you don't have this report already, but I'm going to build it for you. But let's start right now before building it, actually taking a look at this report. So this is a report that I named the Losing Players Report. Now, it has various player names, different statistics that I manually added to the report. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. And it gives me statistical values for each of these players. Now, now, all of these players are here because I set specific parameters. All of them have, I have greater than 2,000 hands against them. Their win rate is negative, so below zero. And their limp is greater than 10% because I think those three things really allow me to find some of the weakest uh, potential potential fishy players that I can exploit, right? One of the good reasons to look at this report too is you can see all these players 44% limping, 32% limping, negative six, negative 19 uh, big blinds per 100 hands, but he limps 49% of the time. This is the kind of report that can really open your eyes to the fact that limping or maybe V-pipping too much a lot of these really fishy plays, calling in uh, at River and winning at Showdown only, uh, let's see here, 27% of the time. Wow, some really telling statistics uh, that indicate very fishy, weak players. Now, I'll show you how to build all this in a little bit, like I said. But one thing I want to point out, you might be thinking, Sky, how does Bad Beat Brat have a positive currency one, but a negative win rate? How is that possible? Same thing with Bob998 down here. Well, here's the thing. If you play at two different stakes, maybe 10 NL and 25 NL, he might have won a lot of money, not a lot, but a decent amount of money at the higher stake, 25 NL. But altogether across both stakes, he's down in the big blinds. That's how this can happen. But for the most part, you're going to see negative win rates and then negative currency one or positive and positive, depending on the report that you run. Now, here's a really cool thing. All of these losing players right here, uh, down here on this bottom row, this is uh, the average of all of these players. So what we can see is all these losing players on average lose 19 big blinds per 100 hands. Their VPIP is 33 on average, really high, but that PFR is only 9. Look at that gap, 33% and 9%. That means at least 24% of the time they're limping or calling preflop, way too passive in general. On average, limping 27% of the time? Is it... A profitable play, do you think, to limp 27% of hands? Probably not, right? They don't fold the steals that often, which means they're defending their blinds way too much. They're donking the flop 20% of the time? This is a pretty good indicator of a player that just doesn't know what they're doing necessarily because quite often, check raising or check calling is most of the time, or check folding, better plays than donk betting, right? Uh, fold a flop C bit. They don't fold that, or they fold a decent amount on the flop, but they almost never fold the turn. 35, I shouldn't say almost never. They only fold the turn 35% of the time. So once these players make their decision to go with the flop, they're going to be going, uh, they're going to be continuing on the turn, which means against these players in general, if you have a value hand, yeah, or if you have a hand, bluff them on the flop. 
but because they continue to the turn, you most likely want to value bet the turn as opposed to bluffing. Now, this is just looking at the average. Some of these players, right, he folds 57%. Keeper folds 69 and 57. You definitely want to be double barrel bluffing this kind of player. Now, right here, call on the river and win at showdown. Wow. Some of these players, he makes good river calls right here. Mr. John won. 61% of the time he wins when he calls. But this player, PP327, he only wins 27%. Go for max value against PP327 when you see that river against them. But in general, they aren't winning even half of the hands. Uh, or on average, I should say. They're not even winning half of the hands where they call on the river. All of these are really indicative that these players are the fishy targets that you always want to go for at the table. All right, so let's go ahead and show you how to build the losing players report. Remember, you're following along with Poker Tracker 4 as you're watching this. Make liberal use of that pause button, pause it, follow all the clicks that I do so you can build your very first report so you can start analyzing some losing players. So, Step one, oh, first off, I have all of the, the different stats that we're gonna add from left to right, the same right here. So once we start creating a new report, we got the information that we can work from. Step one, hit new report, and this is gonna open up the report wizard. Now there are three different types of reports. Right now, we're creating the all players report. So it goes through and it pulls up all the players in your database that fit the parameters that you set. There's a player report that shows you information based on the player you have selected. There's a hand report that shows a list of hands. Now, in your own time, go ahead and run these reports and check them out for yourself. See what you can do for the reports. But for us, we're doing the all players report right now. Make sure this is clicked, add common stats to the report. It's gonna start building out the report for us for, with three of the most common stats. So then hit, oh, before we hit finish, let's give it a name. Losing players, I already have one save, so I'm just gonna give this a two. It's gonna be the exact same, but just to differentiate them. So losing players to report. Um, because my database is so big, so many hands from myself and from students, this report's going to take a long time to populate. But that's fine because we're still building out the report. So ignore the loading part. The stats that come automatically, player name, currency one, and hands. You can see we've got player name, currency one, and hands. Now this is the order that I like to see uh, within the within the report right here. So first off, I always like to see player name and then hands right away. Let's arrow that up. That's gonna move it from the right to the left. So we got player, hands, currency one. Let's start adding stats to the report now. Big blind per 100 hands. So just like you've done before, searching for various stats when you're building the HUD or just trying to learn about stats, just type in a few key aspects of the HUD or of, of the, uh, of the stat and then double click it adds it to the bottom of the list or to the right on the report vpit pfr you got to type these in one at a time but once you build the report and then hit that save button you're going to have this report from now on uh limp now, when it comes to limp, there's a few different limp stats, limp with previous limpers. I'm just looking for pre-flop limp right here. But you could, if you wanted, limp call, limp fold, or limp raise. Fold to steal, donk flop, steal. Fold to, oh, there it is. Fold to steal, donk. Donk flop right there. Fold to flop, see bit, fold to turn, and win at showdown after river call. So I'm just find C bet. Fold to flop. Fold to turn, C bet. And I think the word river is in this stat. WSD percentage after river call. Double click it, bam. Now our report is built. All the different stats are here. You can see it's still loading. Now, what's gonna happen if we actually allow this to populate all the way, and it takes a little time, like I said, with my database, but we're gonna find players in this report with one hand, 
20 hands, 30 hands, uh, 5,000 hands, right? I kind of want to narrow it. Like, I don't want to see a report with 7,000 names with players that I have one or 25 hands on. No, no, no. What we need to do next is uh, change the expression filters, which uh, changes this report for us. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so these expression filters that I'm, gonna, that I'm about to show you, they narrow the report to only display players who fit the certain parameters. Because like I said, I don't want to see players who only have 25 hands on. I can't really learn anything from a player with 25 hands, right? So down here, these are the expression filters we're going to add. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Big blind per 100 hands, less than zero, losing player. Hands greater than 2,000, because I want a good database to look at. And then preflop limp, greater than 10%, signifying a rather weak player. So the first thing you're going to do is click or hit filters. Once again, your report can still be loading. Doesn't matter. We can continue to build out the report. Now, hit filters. Choose the filter type. Simple filters are just like vpipping or call preflop 2-bit, which you can actually run down here as well. But I don't want to put any filters in this report other than expression filters. So select add new expression filter. Oh, anytime there's that, you can click on it. It'll give you some additional information. So we want to first have the report only show players big blind less than 100. So you're going to hit filter expression, hit insert first, and you're going to have to scroll down the alphabet, alphabetical list. We're looking for BB slash 100, big blind one, big blinds one per 100 hands, hit OK. Now that's right here. Simply put your cursor after it, greater than, whoops, less than zero, right? So it's going to show players with a less than zero, so a negative win rate. Hit new. Would you like to save the changes? Yes. And I don't know why it asks you once again, would you like to save the changes? But bam, now this expression filter is up here. Uh, if we just stopped here, it would show us players with one hand and a negative win rate. We really don't want that, right? So let's go to insert a new one. Hands greater than 2,000. So once again, alphabetical, so scroll down and find the H's, number of hands played. Now, greater than 2,000. Hit new, save it yes, save it again yes, bam, bam, two things in place. But I also want to narrow it down a little bit more. I want to see the limpiest of limpers. So let's hit insert. Now, limp is actually, if I remember right, it's preflop limp, like we found earlier. So we got to go to the P's. There it is, preflop limp percentage. Okay, cursor right here, greater than 10. Hit the new, save it yes, save it again, yes. Perfect. So now we've got our report built with all the statistics. We have our expression filters in place. Once we hit okay, now... It's kind of a bummer for me. We have to wait for this to populate. And with my database, it actually takes a little bit of time. But that's fine. This is the kind of thing you do off the felt and uh, while you're studying. So with the magic of video. All right, we are back. And it took about 95 seconds or so for the report to finish. And I hope yours did the same. So you're looking at the same information we saw earlier uh, in, that, in, that, in, in that first slide, right? But now let's get to analyzing these numbers. So let's begin our analysis by sorting through some of these stats. And the way I generally like to do it is I'll first sort from low to high or worst to best in each of the columns, right? So before we get to big blind per 100 hands, let's just look at currency one. Now, negative $1,000, this player up here uh, maybe plays a lot of 100 and L50 and L just losing a good amount of money, right? 609, 150, some pretty good size losses right here over just 2,300, 3,000 hands. These are the kinds of players in general we love to pit ourselves against, right? Let's take a look at win rates next. Okay, the best win rate, negative 0.79, almost a break even and only 43 cents as well. This is not the kind of player I would generally try to target a lot. They're a tight passive. They only play 17% of hands. Not as good as like this player right here who V pips 40 and only raises 11, right? Let's look at it at the high. On the high end, not your favorite, negative 70, negative 55, negative 42. Great players up here. Anybody over a large sample who has worse than 10 big blinds per 100 hands, not anybody. 
for the most part, they're great targets at the table. And you could target them for different things, right? Obviously, all these players are on the more passive side of things, as evidenced by huge, huge VPIPs, but then huge gaps between VPIP and PFR. Great players to target for value. Let's look at the limp percentages here. Highest limp, 58%. Also the biggest dollar loser, highest limper as well. A couple other, uh, ooh, a lot of limps, but not losing a lot of money. It's kind of an interesting thing right there. But I'm thinking this PP327 is a great player for us to look at. Big losses. Right? Fold to steal only 38%. Wow, he defends his blinds 62% of the time if he's folding 38. He's probably defending, as you can see by a big gap right here, probably defending mostly with calls, maybe the occasional three bit as well. A really good player to target when you are uh, in position and they're in the blinds. And a great reason to target them too is look how much he folds to flop C-bets 59% of the time. He defends the flop most of the time, 62% uh, defending, but he gives up 59%. Awesome player, builds the pot for you pre-flop and gives up quickly on the flop. But look at this, his turn fold to see bet is only 34. Great player to double barrel for value. So uh, if you have top pair or better, definitely double barrel him. And then look at this, call river and win at showdown, only 27%. You have to, oh my gosh, you have to triple barrel this guy for value every single time. No checking, no slow playing. You flop that top pair or better. You bet, bet, bet every time. Get max value from him. So he wins 27% of the time. Let's take a look here. One money at showdown after river call. Let's see who wins the most. 61% Mr. John. Oh, almost a break-even player, right? Just very small losses right here. But look at that gap between limps 27%. Even though he calls and wins at showdown, he probably does that. Wins 61% because he folds so often on the flopper turn. Great player to bluff the flop, bluff the turn. But uh, when you're going to bet that river, if he's calling you, he's got a very decent hand. So maybe bluff him on the river. And if you have a value hand, if you have the nuts on the river and he gets there with you, bet big because he generally calls and wins, which means he gets there with one pair or better hands, you're getting max value out of this player right here. But I think the one that I want to look at when we want to analyze some actual hands from this player is PP327. Let's pull him up in the database. So we're going to start here. You would generally um, choose a new player and type it in. I've actually already pulled him up previously. Whoops. So once we pull them up right here, let's head over to the statistics tab. All right, so we have PP327 pulled up in the stats tab. One of the things I love to do when I pull up an opponent and I really want to analyze how they play their hands, I try to look at their whole cards, the things that they've shown down, right? So he's played a ton of hands, lost some good amount of money. Oh, 100 NL, so he buys into $100 tables, $1 big blinds. Um, but he's losing plenty, right? Well, all these hands, you can see, just check, check, check. He didn't show down at any point. Check fold, so we're not going to see showdowns. But we see showdowns here. So let's sort it by whole cards. And bam, all the various showdown hands are right here. Uh, let's take a look here in the cutoff, actually. Uh, let's see here. King four offsuit, calling all streets, flopping that second pair. And he's actually winning this one right here. This is an interesting hand, potentially. So we see PP327127. This is our player. Let's move all these HUD stats out of the way because we're not concerned with these other players. We got this player checked. This player was the original limper. Great. So we know our quote unquote hero or the villain, whatever, has a bottom pair plus the second nut flush draw. Let's see how he plays it. Okay. Two thirds pot bet and a call. Okay. Pair plus draw calling. I understand that it has position as well. Uh, decent sized bet once again, and just calling pair plus draw. And then the nine hits. And then we see once again, another two thirds ish pot bet right here. And he has bottom pair busted flush draw and he still calls. So this is one of the things, this is one of the reasons why we saw his call and win at showdown was only 27% because he cannot fold a pair. He thinks everybody is bluffing. Maybe he thinks this guy has ace king and just bluffing three streets and he's hoping his four is good. And then uh, it was a 10-5 busted flush draw himself. So interesting. Our hero got really lucky with what should be a bad river call. When this player is betting two-thirds pot, all three streets, 
Fifth, bottom pair is probably not good on the three to the flush and plenty of different straights out there available. So I think that was a bad call, but he got lucky and won with that hand. Uh, let's see here. There was another hand. Let's take a look by currency lost here. So this is an interesting hand. Call, flop, call, river, but still lost 63 big blinds on this board. Let's see what happens here. So our hero, quote unquote hero, is right here. Two big blinds. Actually, let's review that action again. So he made a min raise over somebody uh, auto posting a raise. So a raise, min raise. Maybe it's a decent hand. Check and bet a full pot sized bet. Six, three, seven. We get a call and he calls once again. I guess he could be doing it with any pair. Maybe just a seven, maybe pocket tens, maybe ace king, maybe just an ace of diamonds. Um, maybe even slow playing four, five, four straight. So his range is pretty wide. Although, well, it's only wide because of the type of player he is. We've seen him make very questionable calls. But look at that. Versus a full pot size bet and a call, man, he should be restricting his range big time. So this guy just folded. Queen hits. Check and a check. Oh, and then just checking behind. So he didn't have a set of threes, right? Because this is the time to bet. Try to get all of his 142 big blinds. All of his or double up against him. If he had a really strong hand, he'd be betting. Now the 10 hits. 42, two-thirds pot being bet, a fold, and then he calls ace, seven, queen, ten, third pocket pair, and then look it. So our hero in PP poker, you don't have to show. Once you lose, you can muck your hand and we'll never see it. But look at that. He called on the river versus two-thirds pot bet, four, because it's 100 NL, $43, decided to call, and he couldn't beat third pair. So maybe he just had a six. Maybe he had a seven with a nine, with a nine kicker and the ace beat him. Whatever it was, this is the player. If you play against PP327, you've got to go for max value whenever you have top pair, maybe even second pair. Bet, bet, bet when you know, because you know he could be calling with third, even fourth. I bet you he'd call with ace three right here because he's going to believe this guy only has uh, an ace high hand. My pocket three, my, my pair of threes can win right now. Interesting player to be targeting. You can see we got the green color coding around his HUD right now. Now, if by some weird chance PP327 is actually watching this video right now, you could see we're analyzing your game. You are ultra loose, 64% VPIP as of this hand right here. Ultra passive, huge gap in between. And you hate folding flops, turns, and rivers. It appears that you hate folding flops, turns, and rivers. You got to stop your passive, stop your overly loose ways, and uh, tighten your ranges and start raising more, and then folding when it's pretty obvious that you're beat. All righty, so it is time for you to take action. Hopefully you were clicking along as you were watching and you've already done this. You've already created your own losing players report. But I highly recommend just to get practice creating reports, um, whether it's one of the other reports or the all players report, just create one more report right now. Whatever you think you might be interested in, either for yourself or learning about your opponents, go ahead and create them. Sort the results, choose one player to analyze, pull them up in the statistics tab, and then review their showdown hands. Learn what you can about them. Learn different ways that you can exploit this player that you've chosen. Of course, play 200 hands today. Use your own HUD. Please do that. Keep practicing with it. Now, it's key. Over these past six days, I've been asking you to play 200 hands per day. And that's so that for tomorrow's video, when we discuss Leak Tracker, you're going to have 1,200 hands to go through to try to find your potential leak. So that's tomorrow on the final day, day seven of your seven day orientation. So on behalf of Poker Tracker 4, this is Sky Matsuhashi saying thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, day seven, Leak Tracker.